Boris Boatin, welcome. Welcome to Nornos Kunstmuseum, David Norga Daida Museum. We gather today for the third talk of the series, The Butterfly Effect. The series asks a simple question. Can small shifts in museum practice generate seismic change across our societies? In other words, what is the civic life and the duty of a museum? And what meaningful and active steps can museums engage in when faced with the urgent and interconnected challenges in our societies today regarding the climate emergency, climate justice, racial and sexual exploitation, wealth and health inequality, and technological innovation going so rapidly that it's outpacing our ability to comprehend it. We know for a fact that museums are not and never have been neutral, that they have mostly been a tool reinforcing a colonial and a hegemonic ideology. And in an age when this fact is actively being critiqued and dismantled worldwide, when the polyphonies of our world are demanding a paradigm shift, we ask, how can museums participate in facilitating and stimulating the transformations that are urgent and crucial for this change and for our planetary longevity? Having launched the Butterfly series this last autumn with the New York-based curator and activist Laura Rajkovic, followed by a second talk just before Christmas with Oslo-based artist and curator Rafiki, both of which you can find online. Today's offering comes courtesy of Professor Anders Sombi and is titled Being a Guest, Acknowledging Indigenous Land. Anders Sombi needs no introduction, but I think you all know that he is a renowned scholar and lawyer in indigenous rights. He's also a talented Yoik Lorti artist and a skilled advocate for bridging the divides between the knowledge systems of our world. Ande will share his thoughts on the power of land acknowledgements today. How do museums relate to land acknowledgements? And especially in Norway, within the context of the truth and reconciliation process that has just been completed, what should our institutional position be regarding land acknowledgements? In the Nordic region, we are at least 20 years behind the curve in comparison to the institutional and personal experience of using land acknowledgements in parts of the world like Turtle Island, Canada, Australia, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Is this practice alien to SAPMI or have there always been ways of honoring the land embedded in Sami life, past and present? What is the impact of these practices in relation to our shared responsibility to the planet, to our indivisibility from the earth and its inhabitants, human, fauna, flora, and more than human? Through storytelling, yoiking, and personal narratives, and I will today address how institutions and people who are guests on ancestral, unceded Sami lands may go about paying respect. And why is this practice so essential for our collective futures? In this spirit, I would like to offer my own personal land acknowledgement to you, which reads thus. I acknowledge our institutional presence on Sami land, and I pay respect to the deep knowledges of its lands and waters, to all Sami people, and in particular to Sami elders, as well as to the spiritual principles and world perspectives that have and continue to inspire Sami across all of its communities. I am especially grateful to all those Sami friends and colleagues 
who have supported and continue to support a learning, a learning journey that for me will last a lifetime. Thank you. And now, without further ado, please join me in giving a heartfelt welcome to our most honored guest tonight, the phenomenal Anders Sombi. Thank you so much. When time was winter, she was so elegantly dressed in white, in snow white. No wonder that the aurora was yoiking her so intensively. When time was summer, she was not uh, <coughs> less well-dressed, elegant, because the rainbow was her jewelry. No wonder that the waves of the polar ocean was were caressing her so gently. No house ka solo mo cha ta so de che lo e un go cho mil cho mil la sa de che go and the people the generous people they were stacked Rom sa solo cha yale yo lo yo lo e un go ta ve mail me ga pa le yo ku Trumsa Island, the pretty one 
in the north. You know, that is uh, my land acknowledgement to this island. And this, uh, Joik, uh, uh, I discovered after uh, I moved to Tromsø that uh, I have something happened uh, with me that I got this air that uh, that when the ancestors uh, whisper tones into me, then the contract is that I shall give a voice to those tones. And that was uh, the, one of the first ones. Uh, what amazed me with this, uh, Joik, was that it's outside the tradition where I originally come from. I come from uh, Boelemat, uh, and we have a, a totally different Joiking style, a tro- totally different tonality in the Joiks, and totally different techniques. So this was a strange Joik, uh, and uh, I discovered that this uh, Joik um, has the, the Carisoando style, the, the style, it has this uh, same melodiosity as, as the, these Joiks that have originally been uh, here in this area. So uh, I have um, later uh, discovered that uh, that sometimes the ancestors will whisper into my ear, and then um, then we have a kind of negotiation because uh, I have my limits. My voice uh, can be limited. My body can be limited. So we used to have negotiations about. Uh, whether whether I can be the one to to give to give voice to this yoik, and that is um, 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 very interesting because I am a guest here in Tromsø, and uh, I got this form of land acknowledgement. So I used to share this yoik with the Tromsø Society um, as often as I can, because that is my, my uh, land acknowledgement. The addressee of uh, a land acknowledgement um, is um, the ancestors who have been here. They have given us the experiences, the wisdom, the oversight, the insight um, to, uh, that we can use in our lives. And then it is the spirits of the future, the um, people to, to come. We have the, uh, our role um, is to um, carry their hopes and <clears throat> what is to come. So we are sort of in the middle here, that we, uh, on one hand, we have to um, cultivate and to to accumulate and to to reflect over the information that is already gathered to us, and then um, we also have the role of. Um, <clears throat> Uh, sorting out so that the spirits to come uh, shall have uh, as uh, easy lives as we can uh, facilitate for them. So we are uh, sort of, to be alive here is to facilitate, facilitate uh, the, the ancestors and facilitate the uh, people of the future. Um, And uh, uh, what is interesting about land acknowledgement is that we can find a prism and we can look at them um, through through that prism. One uh, of the colors that the prism will uh, show us is the colors of uh, ethics 
of law. Um, and then another color is the color of, of how the cosmology that we live in is structured. Um, for example, uh, do you see uh, only me here standing? Or do you also uh, see the three spirits that always used to, to follow me and, and, and to fix things for me and sometimes joke with me, joke a little bit with me and if I uh, am ignorant and I haven't forgotten to, to speak to them, then they will then they will make me, remind me that, uh, and we're here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, and that is sort of the, the core of, of um, land acknowledgements. It is to, to greet um, the, the uh, place where we are. So in uh, living in the cosmology, in that kind of cosmology, for example, I travel a lot. And every time I come to, into a hotel room, then I will not know what has happened in the room before I came there. Um, has there been happening very nice things there? Has there been happening very terrible things there? How could I know? So then I used to, uh, to do my micro land acknowledgement. I used to, when I opened the, the door, then I used to s say that, hello, my name is Ande Zombie. And I will be staying here for three nights. I'm here um, because... Uh, um, we have this uh, seminar that will last for uh, for three days here, um, <clears throat> and uh, I will be staying here. And um, I come with peace, and I'm also very interested in peace. Um, but if there are somebody here that needs to to talk with me, then uh, talk to me. Then there. Welcome to do that. And then, uh, then um, uh, I used to uh, say that uh, first in my uh, Sami language, and then in, in the language where I uh, where I'm visiting. If I'm visiting Oslo, then I speak in Norwegian. If I visit another place, then I speak in English. Um, and and uh, so, so that is this little uh, flap with my <laughs> butterfly wings that I do every time I, I uh, come to a, to a place where I, where I shall be. Also, if I come to a house, then I used to introduce myself to the house, uh, to the spirits who are there, and and tell them because uh, it's. Um, uh, they will always be curious uh, who is coming now. Um, so, so that's uh, what I uh, used to um, do with, uh, with land acknowledgements. But land acknowledgements are also bigger than that. Because uh, as we are in the middle of, of um, life, Somebody has been here before us, and somebody will come after us. Then there will often times have been happening things in the past that were not so good. And we have this, uh, to be a human, um, I, I have never been a lion, so I don't know how a lion would think, or a wolf. Um, but being a human, uh, one of the things is that we are uh, animals that kill other animals uh, in order to, for our nutrition. And that is a, a very sad part of, of, of being a human. And we need to, to sort of 
organize that somehow uh, because uh, we are uh, doomed into this um, this um, type of, of, of existence. We need uh, our digestive systems uh, require that and in particular in the Arctic because we don't have plants that will keep us up. Something similar is uh, this thing about uh, the, the um, bad things that have been happening in the past. Like uh, I, I used to think as a, as a man that, uh, that uh, a, a part of humanity is that uh, we have... Uh, been oppressing women and um, as a man I'm very sorry for that but I can't sort of rewind life to, to fix these things so somehow we need to organize that um, today uh, in our daily lives uh, and I think that one of the ways that we can do is to to use the small butterfly wings that we that we have, um, that we acknowledge um, what has been happening in the past, and uh, <clears throat> that has um, that is a, a, a practice um, where uh, there is a lot of pain in these things, and and where there is pain, there can um, um, anger can flame up there um, aggressivity can flame up there so so we need to be sort of very musical in our we need a musicality to organize uh, uh, these uh, such things um, and we have that with uh, the relationship between the nation states and the um, indigenous peoples uh, and that is the um, the part uh, where we have maybe been thinking um, most uh, about that. But we, as a, uh, as a humanity, we have many challenges to, to organize uh, uh, these things uh, so that we can send, send uh, so much good energy to those generations to come. And we can calm down uh, the the ancestors that are whispering. I have a very personal um, story, but that uh, that became a, a kind of, of butterfly wing that uh, that um, um, caused uh, many directions in my life. You know, I I was uh, in a boarding school. Uh, I was sent to a boarding school. I was 12 years old then when I was sent there. And uh, that was a, a, a challenging uh, uh, thing. Um, but then uh, I was almost um, <clears throat> through the boarding school. Uh, and then um, we have this, um, this expression uh, in Sami cosmology that uh, people of the land uh, the land um, and then uh, um, our boarding school was built on a on a track so it crossed a track so there was an ancient track that was uh, and uh, <clears throat> my room happened to be on that track I, I later uh, learned that but I was uh, in my room at the boarding school there. Um, I was about to, to um, start on my last year there. And then uh, a, 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 a person of the land, an Etnan Haldevas, an ancestor, uh, stood in my room there. <clears throat> and... Uh, and uh, I, I saw, uh, saw him. He had a, a white-gray gakti. 
and a, a hat different than than mine, a, a little uh, a less winds. You know, this is a four wind hat: north, south, east, and west. So it is um, um, a piece of clothing that uh, has. Uh, religious uh, significance from the, our pre-Christian religion. So he had a, a, a lesser uh, variation of, of this four wind hat. And he spoke to me uh, and I, he said that uh, <clears throat> we have been waiting for you and uh, you must uh, you must uh, put all your effort to uh, <clears throat> to uh, uh, the language, the yoiks, the rites. And, uh, <clears throat> and since then, uh, it was just a little uh, statement there. But that little statement then made, made uh, me decide. Uh, not there and then, but uh, his uh, uh, words were like seeds that came into my heart. And then I, uh, they uh, s uh, slowly flourished. And I ho uh, uh, the thing that I hope that <clears throat> they will never start flourishing, that they will be flourishing there um, as long as... Uh, I, I live in this, uh, with this body and I hope that they will um, flourish also <clears throat> when I uh, become an ancestor uh, that comes and whispers uh, to others when my role will uh, have shifted. Um, the thing, how can we use uh, land acknowledgement, acknowledge uh, these um, past wrongs and try to send good energy into the future. How can we do that? So there we can learn from the, from the indigenous practices uh, that, that uh, it does something to, to us when people say to us that, uh, I'm sorry for what happened to your father or what happened to your grandfather. Uh, when people say that, then it warms us. Uh, it warms a person. And it also warms uh, to, to hear, uh, for example, now the energy that we saw in the, in the Truth and Reconciliation Committee that delivered the report that you have this acknowledgement of the facts that there was something that happened there and that shouldn't happened. happen. That has uh, <clears throat> such a, a, a productive energy, but it's challenging for us because then we can um, perhaps... Um, get lost in anger or, or, uh, or um, have an emotive uh, attitude that uh, will not be productive. Um, um, and it is also, um, I think it's a, it's a law of nature that the smaller the people, the happier they will become. If you, for example, if you say Udag uh, and you are an American, a Norwegian will become very happy for that. <laughs> there, it, that that uh, creates so much good energy in that conversation. And I think it's a law of nature that the smaller the people uh, who get to hear their language, the happier they will be. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a very good uh, productive um, th uh, part of the land acknowledgement uh, practice that, that one uh, acknowledges uh, the wrongs that have happened and then uh, reach out as, uh, as you do when you say 
where the um, even if it's not correctly pronounced, or, or then uh, that uh, is something that helps the communication to to be um, to, to get the productive start, and that is what we can uh, we can uh, bring with us uh, into uh, the the. Uh, uh, communication um, <clears throat> um, because uh, in um, uh, we can say that uh, that uh, uh, it the situation uh, in the Sami areas is different than the situation for example in North America because there the colonization is so manifest that uh, uh, one day um, a boat comes uh, and then the colonization takes place. Um, every th place where there is a continent, like the Asian continent, the African continent, the European continent, there we have a, a different dynamics um, for uh, for the uh, for the land um, grabbing. There we have uh, a, a slower uh, process uh, uh, for for uh, good and for bad, and that means that that when we uh, do our land acknowledgments, then our starting point is that uh, the loss of land, the loss of dignity, all the things that we uh, want to um, sort of uh, um, heal a little bit. We can never fix it, but we can heal. Uh, that's our power here and now. We, we can heal. So, <clears throat> so therefore... Um, we can uh, um, use uh, as a starting point that there are other dynamics. Uh, <clears throat> this, um, if we uh, then see what are the possibilities that are in, in, uh, in the Sami cosmology, how could Sami cosmology contribute into uh, getting these um, better dynamics uh, in in our communication, and and we have this uh, that uh, we have the, the people of the land. Uh, I'm so uh, honoured and so happy for that uh, Hans Ragnar Keviselie uh, Matisen is present here because he has been so important for us to map our land. Because one of the uh, challenging situations um, was that uh, uh, the names of our places uh, were um, hidden away. That was a, a, a way of the of, of the colonization and uh, um, <clears throat> Hans Ragnar's map is um, such a wonderful piece of land acknowledgement because it is so um, uh, 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 contains so much information it's so informative to us and it's said in such a beautiful way um, so I, I think that uh, that is also a, a very um, good way to to uh, to do um, land acknowledgments. Uh, they are challenging because uh, they um, <clears throat> require from us that we tolerate to see the ugly. Um, that we um, do not shy away from that, that we have to, to live there, 
to meet, to face that yes, the ugly has happened. But the, the important question is, what now? What now? How can, how can uh, we do that? And uh, <clears throat> I think that it's such a good inspiration for uh, all institutions um, to, to do land acknowledgements. As every other statement, for example, if I say to you, I love you, then um, it is a very uh, strong statement to give. And it's so crucial then that it doesn't become, I love you. I love you. <laughs> that, um, and that is one of the challenges with the land acknowledgements. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> they have to be um, meant, they have to be delivered with dignity they have to be delivered with beauty, as um, Hans Rangnar has uh, delivered uh, uh, to us as, as a visual example of, of how that can be done. And we can do it in, in many, many ways. Like, I have this four wind hat project going on uh, that I acknowledge uh, the... Uh, ancestors and also the people uh, in the future uh, coming in the future that uh, I will um, I will I want that uh, the hat shall be so much alive and so vibrant when I'm leaving so that uh, the <clears throat> they shall um, have um, that as an inspiration um, that they can carry um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, uh, these uh, acknowledgements, we therefore have to um, look at them as very beautiful. Uh, imagine you have a candle with this most beautiful little flame. Um, and when you hand that uh, little candle by giving a land acknowledgement, you always have to guard this little flame that it is alive, that, that it is beautiful. So I think that um, that was what I have prepared to you today. And if you want to have comments or questions, then you're most welcome to ask. Uh, I'm asked if I would um, like the educational, uh, the land acknowledgement to be a, a part of the educational practice. And my answer to that is definitively yes, uh, because it's through education that uh, institutions can communicate. And, and it can also be, um, education is, uh, is good in that respect that uh, you know, when you have to take bitter medicine, if you have to take the whole bottle at once, it will be very challenging. But if you can take it in small spoons, then uh, it's much easier. And education gives you that possibility that you can um, deliver this. Uh, because we are, we are talking about uh, how, to, how to organize pain that we inherited and that we want uh, that um, the people of the future shall not uh, have as much pain as what we got. We shall, we shall hand them a little more beautiful, a little better world with the, the small butterfly wings that we have.
For, for land acknowledgement. This is the poetic program for land acknowledgements. And it says, In a dark world, we need stars so that people who have got lost again can find their way home. We yoik the star girl. We yoik her with intensity. We yoik her with strength. We yoik her with affection. We yoik her with love. In a gray world, we need colors so that people who have lost their joy again can find it. We yoik the star girl. We yoik her with strength. We yoik her with intensity. We yoik her with affection. We yoik her with love. In a silenced world, we need tones so that people who have lost their songs again can find them. We yoik the star girl. We yoik her with intensity. We yoik her with strength. We yoik her with affection. We yoik her with love. And that is my sort of uh, small acknowledgement here at the end that I think that uh, um, the uh, oppression of women that we have inherited was a very sad thing. Thank you. <laughs> 